The following feature is rated CR by the TJB Picture Association of America. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everyone, I'm TJB Chris. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for watching. Today we have yet another video for the Model 16B, the SRAM upgrade. I know I said the last video would be the last video, but then I got a little toy. Coco folks, that rating at the beginning of the video was for my friends in the Coco community. Um, I'm going to need you guys to uh, avert your gaze. Look over there. Hey, is that the monster from Dagrith going by? We should go check that out. Whatever you do, don't look at this, because I got a visit from the Real-Time Clock Fairy. This is the Tandy Emeritus Real-Time Clock Board, designed specifically to go onto the SRAM board here. And In fact, I've installed a header that wasn't here before, and I've assembled the board. The board was given to me by one of the members of Tandy Emeritus, so again, I thank you very much for that. Um, and everyone, Tandy Emeritus, for all the generosity and support, um, really appreciate it. But anyway, today we're going to install this, get it back in the Model 16, and then, to make it work, we've got another treat, and that is Xenix 3.4. Um, you're going to see a little link to the video for Tandy Assembly right about there. Um, last year, where they talked about Xenix 3.4 and this SRAM project and the real-time clock, um, although at that time I think the real-time clock was just in the emulator, but anyway... Um, there's a video about Xenix 3.4, so I won't go into too much of the details other than to say it provides specific support for this SRAM board and for the real-time clock. No more typing in times and dates. It's a thing of the past. And uh, to my joke about the Coco folks, um, thank you all for watching. And I will get to the Coco, I promise. But also, there's been a long-running thread in the community. It's kind of a theme. Whenever someone's building something, someone inevitably asks if they're going to put a real-time clock on it. It's been a desire to have a real, real-time clock. And it's a long-running discussion, so this is all meant in good fun, and I hope all my friends over there take it that way. All right, let's stop jabbering and make this thing go. All right, let's power it up. I don't expect any problems here. The thing's run pretty well with the card thus far. So this is going to be 3.3 because we have to install 3.4. And I have Xenix 3.4 on this handy SD card, which will go right into my Lothrec here. And the image was also given to me by the same person that gave me the, the board for the clock. All right, we're booted up. Let's insert our floppy disk, floppy disk, log on as root. This is drive two. Uh, if you remember from previous videos where I got the floppy drive going, this became drive two. So that is what we did. Now, I did take a peek at the image and the readme file on it. Uh, and the way that this works is you just extract the tarball. The disk is just a straight up tar. So you just untar it right to the root directory. Oops. And that is where I am, and that is what I'm doing. Alrighty, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the README file. And here it says, DS1511 RTC driver kernel and utilities. After extracting the floppy in the root directory and before booting on the new kernel, if you've not already done so, run make.rtc.sh, which we will do. And then we'll delete the script. What I'm going to do is do these steps and reboot it without renaming the kernel. And then when it comes back up next time, I'll, I'll rename the kernel and back up the existing one. So let's do that. Oops, RTC. I apparently cannot type today. There we go. And I'm going to remove that script. All right, we'll give this thing a reboot. And now, at the Xenix prompt, I'm going to answer xenix.rtc instead of just pressing enter. Once again. Okay, come on, Schwartz. This will be the new 3.4 kernel. I think we're going to have success this time. Yep, there we go. Hey, look at that, Xenix 3.4, the initials of the folks, Tandy Emeritus, who worked on it. And this is uh, March 1988, squeezed and pulled and hurt my neck in 1988. What movie's that line from? We have the MMU detected, 11 bits total, uh, with the 3-bit extension, 7.5 megabytes of total RAM. RTC found, DS1511, battery good. The time is incorrect, of course, because it's not set, so we're going to fix that. So we're going to go right to normal mode. Let it prompt me for the date and time. 
And then I didn't mention it, but you probably saw on the readme there's a new utility called Etsy Hardware Clock, HW Clock, that I can use to set the clock. So we'll see if we can figure out how that goes. Okay. It is, time is close, 230319, and it is actually 1315, according to the Micronta clock on the wall. Okay. Root. Okay. Uh, let's see what this does. It should just tell me the time is invalid. Okay, now do you have some help for me? Well, I always try the universal dash dash help. Hey, we have dash dash help. All right, and dash s sets the system clock from the hardware clock, if cron is used. Dash dash set sets the hardware clock from the system clock. That's the one we want. RTC is now, okay. The other thing we're gonna do is we're going to make the Xenix kernel RTC the default. Alrighty. Okay, now again, I, I copied the Xenix.RTC over top of the existing kernel after backing up the Z33 kernel, of course. So now just hitting enter should boot into 3.4. And in the future, I can skip the date prompt by just pushing F1, which will boot straight to Xenix without asking the date. So I'm going to go into multi-user mode here, control D, and you can see the time is set. Battery is good. Oh, this is nifty. And it's going to prompt me for the date and time because I didn't push F1. And the time and date are correct. Neat. So now we have a hardware real-time clock Never waste time typing the date and time again on your TRS-80 Model 16B, 16, or Tandy 6000, or your enhanced Model 2 for those, those of you with the 68,000 cards in your 2s or 12s. Freedom from typing the date and time. What a time to be alive. Actually, it's really freaking cool. So that's pretty much going to do it for this video. Uh, we have a real-time clock. We have a SRAM card. We have... 8 megabytes of memory, it's time to move into this thing and start to really customize it. And that includes changing the message of the day there for me. And there's one more thing. As Billy Mays uh, used to say, but wait, there's more. The Xenix 3.4 upgrade also includes an enhancement to the shutdown utility, dash Q. So it will no longer ask you if you are sure, it just goes and shuts the thing down. All right, shut down quick, make it snappy. So that's another neat little feature added to Xenix 3.4. So that's going to do it again for this. Um, I'm TJB Chris. Thank you for watching. In our next video, I have a couple of other non-16B items in the queue, so you should be seeing those fairly soon. Until next time, grab your favorite beverage of choice and stay classy.